Okay, so I'm going to go over some basic steps that you'll need to take in order to plan and prepare for your social issues persuasive paper. The very first thing I'm going to suggest you do is go into your Google Docs, go to the desktop version, create a new file for your persuasive social issue works cited page. Once you get there, uh, name it persuasive social issues hyphen 16 and your username. Then you're going to go over to the add-ons button, which again is only going to be available if you are on the desktop version. You will be able to do this on your iPad or on a desktop or laptop. You can also use your time during SSR if you tell me that you watched this video and you learned that you um, have to do this in a certain way and you would like to go up during SSR time. You're going to go over to add-ons and if you don't have any, then you're going to go down to get add-ons. When you go to Get Add-ons, it's going to list all of the different resources that you can use in Google Docs to better help you in any of your classes. The one you're going to go ahead and add on to your Google Docs is the Easy Bib. Once you add that on, you're going to accept whatever it says that needs to be done in order to add it to your Google document. You're going to go up to Add-ons, click on Easy Bib Bibliography Creator, and Manage Bibliography and this window will pop up to your right. It's going to say cite a source. You can click in that area and once you have that loaded it's going to allow you to select if you found your resource through a book, a journal article, or a website and then you're going to search the item once you have that information and then let it know if you are going to need MLA format, APA format, or Chicago. But now that I have this page up, as I'm searching for my resources today, I can gather my information that I need for the future. Because for this week, I only need to identify four sources. Two that were originally in text, printed text, which would have been a book, a journal article, a newspaper, or something of the like. And then something else that would be online, so reliable sources through .gov websites or anything like that. To begin my research, I'm going to start with my good old friend, Sir Google, and I'm going to type in a topic. Um, so my teacher has said that my topic is hate crimes. So I'm going to see what Google returns. Very first website that pops up is hate crimes, and it's through the RAIN Association, which is a rape abuse and incest website. It is a national organization, and I know that to be a reliable source because I've seen information before. So I can go there and look at that online resource and that might provide me with some information. But the top hit is usually going to be Wikipedia. And so here I can go and look at the basic information about my topic. Wikipedia is a good starting off point. It gives me a chance to define my topic a little bit more and brainstorm ideas that I can look into for research. Then I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of this document. At the very bottom of the document, I'm going to be provided with some resources. These resources are under the references and I can go through and click on any of these to determine if these resources are reliable resources. Things like the FBI's hate crime statistics would be beneficial and I don't know if I need them for my paper or not, but at least this is a good start if I have no other resources to look at at this point. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the Gale database through our Central York High School library. When I get into the Gale database, I can just go to Power Search on the bottom left and click Hate Crimes, or type in Hate Crimes and click Search and see what it has to offer me. Here again, I am provided with tons of resources about hate crimes. And I can go through any of these, read them briefly, and determine what it is that I might need from that. On the left-hand side, it tells me how many of my results were found in academic journals, magazines, books. So I could use any of the first three things as my print resources because although they're online now, their origination was in print. So then I select my information and I might say hate crimes is too large of a topic so I'm going to look at hate crimes law and I can search for more information. Again, I just know the general topic is hate crimes. I haven't decided what I want to say about it. 
For my topic, I know because my teacher said, I can't just say that I am for hate crimes or against hate crimes. I need to have a more specific thing. Just like I couldn't choose a topic of child abuse and say, I'm for child abuse. I need to analyze the persuasive ideas that are represented within that topic. So I can also go back to my Google database and I can search Google for the Google Scholar site. I'm going to go to Google, I can type in Scholar, and that's the first thing that um, comes up, and I could type in hate laws, or hate crime laws. And I can decide that I want to look at case law, and maybe Pennsylvania, because maybe I want to focus my report on the area specific to where I am. And so then I can do a search, and now I have some case law. So there is more print resources for, for me to use. If I really have no idea what I want to say about it, I can see what other people have said by doing a general Google search for persuasive papers on hate crimes. And I happen to find this website which does not look reliable because it's got some advertisements here and over on the right side it's got Oprah Winfrey sneezing, crying, something, I don't even know. But I can look at the concept here and come up with some information. And I can see if it's something that I could maybe use to form my own argument. So I think the second one is kind of interesting. It's saying that hate crimes are unfair because then it's saying that there are specific laws dealing with specific orientations of individuals as opposed to everyone having the same laws and having the same impact and consequences as breaking those laws. I never thought of it that way. But it gives me something to think about and an idea for maybe formulating a thesis. One other way that I can search is if I go back to Google and I search hate crime laws site colon dot gov and that should oh, sorry still in my Google Scholar here so if I just go back to Google put the same thing now I have all the government sites that have anything dealing with hate crime laws so there is some more reliable information there. So maybe I want to use this information from this website and I want to hold on to it for my purposes of class because I need my information for this week. So I'm going to go over here. I found this on a website. I'm going to put the URL in. I need it to be MLA format. I'm going to search the information that is the correct site that I wanted to use so I will select it and then I'm going to add it to my bibliography and then I also liked what this other website had to offer me and while I may not use it for my actual paper I want to gather all my materials and resources so that I can use it if I need to so that's another search of a website I copied and pasted the information in it's showing up right down here the hate crime law arguments pros and cons I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna add that to my bibliography as well and then before oops I added it twice by accident but before I submit this I'm gonna make sure that my works cited page is in alphabetical order so that I have everything but by this week I should have four sources listed um, and that'll help me to maintain all the information that I need for my own research later on. If you have any questions or concerns please sign up for a flex period or voice them in class so that I can better help you with this. Thanks and have a great day.